Today we are, um, yeah, I think the Santi Devi is already here. So we will start um, with her. Uh, so she is um, a very great um, example for us. How she is very much dedicated for the service of uh, uh, Vaishnavas and Srila Gurudev. Because since I know her, I joined in 1996, I met Srila Gurudev in 1996. And since I know her, I'm seeing her how much she's dedicated in service of Srila Gurudev by um, she's distributing Srila Gurudev's book. She is doing a, bu a book publication. Also the lectures of Srila Gurudev, she was so much absorbed uh, also in transcribing the lectures and make it available together with her team under the guidance of Shamarani Didi. The Vashanti Didi is um, so much dedicated also to uh, um, uh, Shamarani Didi. And uh, so uh, she is her uh, personal associate, actually personal servant. And she's traveling with her since many years through the world and making arrangements for her tour and her preaching and also uh, arrangements in, um, uh, in distribution of the artworks of Shamarani Devasi, Shamarani Devi. So um, also she did also, uh, I, uh, what I, have so, I saw also during the years, also in prisons, she went to prisons yeah, for the preaching program, and uh, which was also headed by Shamarani Didi, and uh, together with her team. So, so much um, she has experienced. Also she experienced, also she was witnessing also um, the conversation between Shamarani and Shila Gurudev, because Shamarani Didi, um, during the presence of Shila Gurudev, she was, um, Shamarani Di was asking many questions, personal questions to Srila Gurudev also for the benefit of us. And um, so what I saw is uh, because um, for Santi Didi, she witnesses, so it's nice that she has so many in, um, experiences and uh, because of her witness and also her dedication in all seva. So um, she is blessed by Vaishnavas and Srila Gurudev. And because um, she dedicated her life actually, so also to, yeah, to Srila Gurudev. So we are very much um, fortunate to uh, hear today something about, uh, of Vasanti Devi. So her experience she can share with us and also her, how she met with Srila Gurudev uh, that she can share and whatever she wants, she can speak. And she has uh, like uh, 45 minutes she can uh, speak today. Welcome, Vasanti Devi Vasi. Thank you. Okay. You can hear me okay? Yes, very clearly. Okay, check. Yana Timranda Syan, Yanjana Salakaya, Chakshur, Militam Jina, Tasmai Shri, Gurude Namaha. Among Shipadaya Radikai Priyamane, Shishima Bhakti Branta Narayan, Swami Tinamane. Anchakalpa Chubas Cha, Kripas and Nubi Eva Cha, Paditanam Bhavani Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha. So, first, I offer my heartfelt obeisances to our beloved Holy Master, Nitya Vishnu, Vishnu Pada, Sota Sota Shishimad, Bhakti Vranta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all our entire Rupanuga Guru Varga, our guardians on this path of bhakti. So, thank you so much for making me look larger than life. I wish I could live up to all of what. You just, Shashi Kaladidi just said, but, uh, it's very wonderful to have such beautiful God family and encouraging God family. Um, listening to Mama to sing, I was brought back to the ladies' kirtan bus during Kartik. So that was really a uh, beautiful kirtan and wonderful times. Um, so I'm very grateful, very thankful for the invitation. Um, every time I met with Sheila Gurudev since from between 2008 and 2010, he would always ask me to speak. And I'm actually quite shy by nature, even though Gurudev, you know, whatever she guru does is for our uh, highest development and calling. So Gurudev put me in the limelight a bit, but actually my nature is to, to be in the background and I'm a little bit shy. And so, in 2008, every time I saw him, he started asking me to speak. And one time we were in Odessa at the um, festival in Odessa, Ukraine. And we got in at like two in the morning and we slept a little bit. And then I woke up like six, seven, I was starving. And so I went 
to find the kitchen. I didn't know the lay of the land of the festival site. And so I found the kitchen and I got some prashadam. And when I came back, our hallway, our room was in the same hallway as Sheila Gurdave's. And when I opened the door to the hallway, Gurdave was just standing there by himself. And he looked at me and he said, oh, Hari Kata is going on? And I said, I don't know, Gurdave. I, we just came this morning in the middle of the night and I just went to find prashadam. And again, he said, so there's Hari Kata going on? And I was like, I don't know, Gurdave. And then he said, oh, and then you should speak. And I was like, oh, I can't speak. I get this, like, what, what's in my throat? I can't, I can't, it doesn't come out. And then Gurdave just, he was like, oh, that will, that will pass. And he just, you know, didn't, ex didn't accept my excuses. So continuously over those next couple of years, every time he saw me, that was what he would say. And um, um, yeah, in one time in, uh, at the Brazil, 2010, was it 2010 or not? Yeah, 10, his last Vyasa Puja festival. He, uh, he said to me, you should be ready to speak on my Vyasa Puja. So of course I prepared and then I felt like such a demon that morning when I offered my pranam in the temple, when I went to the temple room and offered pranam, my prayer was, please Gurudev, don't call on me. And he didn't, but I was ready. So, um, so as we know, you know, she uh, was in Shri Guru Trani Rati from Shri Guru Charna Padma. Uh, the instructions of Shri Guru are life and soul and following Gurudev's instruction is, is our component, of, is our main component for success. So. Again, thank you so much for including me in this wonderful centennial celebration. Um, so I was listening, I don't know if you're all on this um, WhatsApp group where every other, every day they're sending Hari Kata of Gurudev's, one day English, one day Hindi. I think it's like every other, anyways, every day they're sending some Kata and it's extremely- Yeah, many are in that group, so uh, oh, yes. It's nice, good, because it's phenomenal. So I was listening to the Kata a few days ago and Gurdi was saying, um, it was so intense actually, it was kind of heavy. Gurdi was saying, I think it was from 90, I don't remember the year. Anyways, Gurdi was saying, my body is very weak and I've only come here to help you all. Um, otherwise I have no self gain. I had no reason to come to the West. I'm very happy being doing my bhajan in, in the holy land of Vrindavan. And um, he said, and when I'm in Vrindavan, I can speak such high topics. I can speak about Gopi Prem. I can speak, you know, Gopi Geet and, you know, all these really high topics. But when I come here, because of the qualification of the devotees, I can't speak such high things. So, because people, you know, we're not qualified. You're all not qualified. He said, so coming to the West is like cutting jungles. And he said, in India, he said I want to be in India, but I'm worried for all of you. Therefore, because I'm worried, I've come to these places. So I was just, wow, you know, that, that, that compassion, you know, this abode, she grew with Gurudev, our Gurudev, the abode of compassion. And it reminded me of a lecture that Gurudev gave um, on Samsara Dava Nalalita Loka on Guru Vasakam when he was expressing how when Sri Krishna's mercy is so thick, then he comes, you know, Shakshatri Vena, he comes as she grew, you know, non-different, different, but non-different. And Gurudev in that lecture, he was sharing how nobody invited Srila Prabhupada to the West. He just came, you know, on an intense journey on that boat. I mean, obviously he's a pure devotee and he doesn't suffer, but in his human-like pastimes, having two heart attacks on that boat, coming and living with a bunch of druggies who stole from him. Gurudev said, that is Guru Tattva. So similarly, this lecture that I heard the other day, I was feeling like Gurudev saying, I had no need to come to the West only because I'm worried about you all. And this samsara dava, this burning, blazing fire, because you jivas, he's saying, my children, you're all burning. You guys are, you're all burning. Therefore I had to come. So what mercy, how fortunate are we? It just, I can't even fathom my good fortune. So for me, that good fortune uh, was, um, Awesome in 2000, I was on a quest searching for spiritual life throughout college and, and grad, my graduate studies as well, going here and there and everywhere, every temple, every church, every this, that. And then um, my best, while I was in graduate school, my best friend from Los Angeles, Krishna Mai, she uh, started doing martial arts with our martial arts teacher, Shiva Nanasena Das. And she was calling me, she's like, my teacher's so spiritual. And so when I moved back from, I was on the East Coast of America, 
and I moved back to the West, to my hometown of Los Angeles in 98. I was going to move to Israel because I was raised Jewish and I thought, let me explore my roots. And um, so she introduced me to Shivananda and he said, well, until you go do martial arts with me, you know, Israel is a very dangerous place. And so he would just speak. Um, and also he had no car at that time. So you had to pick him up for a martial arts class. And he speaks a lot. And for any of you who know him, he can speak and speak and speak. So he would, but his, he has so many amazing things to say and he would give Bhagavad Gita class. And, and he was like this from, he started speaking Hari Kata and I, he gave me Bhagavad Gita, changed my life. So I never went to Israel. And in uh, 2000, we were at the Iskon temple for the Prabhupada festival and a very wonderful devotee also from Holland, actually Sri Vinda Didi. She, um, she told my, she saw Krishna Mai and I and she said, oh, girls, um, can you come to my apartment? And we were like, okay. And she said, we we're wondering why would she invite us to her apartment? We don't even know her. But when you're new, you think everyone's a pure devotee. So fortunately, and she took us to her apartment. We didn't know it was owned by Iskand at that time. And she opened the drawer. She said, I never do this. But my guru is telling me to tell you that he's coming tomorrow. And we were like, okay. She opened a drawer. She's like, write this down. And we were like, okay. So we write it down. And she's like, you have to come, you have to come. We were like, okay. So we went, um, actually we weren't gonna go. We were taking music lessons. Krishna Maya was learning Madanga and I was learning harmonium from a Prabhupada disciple. I'm like, should we go see this guru or should we go to our music lesson? And I'm like, oh, let's go to our music lesson. So we go to our music lesson and our teacher, he said, oh, he wasn't there. The son was there. And he said, oh, my father went to go see Shula Narayan Maharaj. And we're like, oh my gosh, then we gotta go too. So we sped over there and we come in and we were a little nervous because we're like, why did this lady take us to her apartment? And when we came in, everything's the same. The altar, Prabhupada is there. Everyone's dressed the same and just phenomenal. It was the appearance day of Lord Nishingadev. And um, I, mean, I never heard that pastime before. So when Ashram Raj, you know, Gurudev would always have his sannyasis. They would spontaneously do the, enact the pastime of, uh, kill, you know, killing Ranya Kasipu. And when, when Ashram Raj said stop 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 this chanting I jumped and freaked out I'm like I thought it was real I was like what's going on what's going on but um it was a very phenomenal I knew you know the moment I walked in I just my heart knew wow this is I looked at Guru Dave I said he can give me what I'm striving for in this life he can get he can take me out of this material world and I never felt like that when I saw any previous guru so that started my sojourn on the bhakti path that was in 2000 <clears throat> and then um so i'll just jump then into you know great came back again in december to america we took initiation all of us me krishna my shivananda and his son that time was eight years old and then in 2002 kartik i um i was here in kartik and one the devotee who used to travel shamarani didi said didn't decided she didn't want to go anymore it was too tiring you know, life with traveling with Gurdjieff was extremely fast paced, extreme. I mean, Gurdjieff's nonstop. So, um, and then Shamrani also nonstop. So that devotee didn't want to go anymore. And Anita and I, Anita Dasi and I were on the bus and during Kartik and Anita finished her Gayatri mantras. And she looked at me and said, maybe we, maybe we can go. I was like, that's ridiculous. You know, we're two years initiated, just fresh from, you know, breaking every, all the four regulative principles. And I said, we're too, too junior, too young, too new. And anyways, I went and I told, I asked Sharmani Didi, I said, uh, we had this crazy idea that maybe we can go with you on the next tour. And she said, well, it doesn't look like Krishna's sending anybody else. So um, she said, let's ask Prajanath Prabhu. So we asked Prajanath Prabhu and, and he said, we could try it. And he said, Gurudev would pay for one ticket. So Anita and I, all the rest of the money we had left, we put together and we got the second ticket. And we got a world ticket, world tour ticket. At that time, we were getting world tour tickets where you get like 16 stops. And um, so we went on the first tour and um, it was incredibly, you know, we were extremely new and we made so many mistakes from the second we got to the first stop in Australia, nobody picked us up. And um, it was my miscommunication, I suppose. And there Shamarandidi just laid down on a, on a cold, um, airport bench and I was feeling devastated and uh, we had no money I don't know what we were thinking traveling with no money but somehow we got the information booth 
uh, people to let us. I had one person's phone number in Brisbane, even though we were in, no, I had one person's number in Willemba, even though we were in Brisbane and they came and picked us up and we were rewarded by getting to stay, stay in the room where Gurdjieff stays when he would travel through Brisbane. So by Gurdjieff's causeless mercy, I um, was able to be on tour with him from 2002 until, uh, until his final, until he left this world in 2010. And the last stop in the West was Russia. And actually that was really intense. There was, it was uh, over 120 degrees every day. And there was forest fires erupting all over the city and of Moscow and Chupanimi Mirage actually called Gurdjieff and said, don't come, it's not a good idea. And Gurdjieff said, no, I'm coming. You know, again, this, this some started to have a Natalia Loka. I mean, really blazing forest fires going on and this Krunya, this, this quality of compassion and mercy, Gurdjieff came and it was the first day. So they had this like yurt and me at that time, Gov I need to stop traveling with us and, and the devotee from Badger, Govinda Priya was traveling with us. And Govinda Priya and I, all we could say all day long, was I'm so hot, I'm so hot, I'm so hot. We were like, that's all we could say it was that like we were so hot. And then they had this like yurt, which was like was so hot. And Gurudev came to class this regular time, five in the evening. And when he was about to start class, he looked at Rajna Prabhu and he said, who brought me here? And he got up and he walked out of the class. He walked out and went back to his room and everyone, we we're all crying, like, you know, what's gonna happen? And then Gurudev said, he would get to class at six in the morning for half an hour only because the heat was just so intense. And then there was an initiation. He initiated about 200 devotees. And I realized, I, I was watching, I said, this is why Gurdjieff came to Russia, you know, in this intense, just terrible um, circumstances. But what mercy, you know, what mercy. So um, I'm gonna share a little bit about the different books, as you mentioned, book publishing. Um, different books that, that I was fortunate to be engaged a little bit in my capacity, what I could help with um, in the publishing field of the GVP. So um, my, well, I'll speak first about my uh, baby, my baby book, the Shiva Tattva. Um, I was in Malaysia one year. I was actually not, oh yeah, we were in Malaysia and the devotees took us, I was there on Shivaratri and there was this big Shiva temple on the top of a hill. And there's thousands of people coming all night long and the devotees took me there and we went and they offered my pranam. And then we were there and I felt so devastated. I was like, we have no, no book about Lord Shiva to give to these thousands of people. And I was like heartbroken. I was like, I didn't even want to be there. I couldn't be there watching all these people and not have something to give them. So we came back when I came back to India a couple months later, I told Shula, I asked Shula Gurudev, I said, Gurudev, I told him that we were at this Shiva temple with thousands of devotees in Malaysia, or thousands of not devotees, Shiva devotees. And I said, if you think it's a good idea, I was thinking we could put your lectures into a booklet about Lord Shiva. And Gurudev was so happy. I got my first head pat. He said, oh, very intelligent, very intelligent. So we immediately started that book. We were living in Govardhan at the time because we were working on these um, boss reliefs, which I'll share later. Uh, about these, these paintings in the Govardhan temple. And so simultaneously to those paintings, there was a crew of us working on um, the Shiva Tapa book. And as we were, oh, the Malaysians told me that they would fund it as well. And so as we were editing, so for the Harikata, when we would send out lectures on Harikata, it was so fast. Like we would try and type it and get it out as fast as we could. So as we were editing these lectures, Shamrani Didi realized that three different pastimes got merged into one, like three pastimes about demons. I think it was Salva and anyways, Maya Donova, they all had airplanes and it was two separate stories but they got merged into one and we wrote to Gurudev and told him and he said, oh, follow the Bhagavatam. You edit it, follow the Bhagavatam. So, um, so then I kept trying to get in touch with them when we were getting closer to printing time and I kept trying to get in touch with Malaysians, telling them you know, how much we got the quote and how much it would cost. And they weren't replying to me and I was getting a little nervous. And I would go to Chakashwar Mahadev every day. It was about a 20 minute walk from our temple. And I would pray to him, you know, please, you know, let this book be finished and let the money, the donation come for the book printing. And one day Shamarani said, I don't think we're gonna be able to print, you know, there's no money to print. So I went again to Chakashwar Mahadev and I was like, please, Mara, you know, Chakashwar, please do something. And when I came back that day and I went on my uh, email, I had a letter 
it was I mean, crazy. I had a letter from Rajnath Prabhu saying, how's the book going? And if you need any help financially, let us know. I was like, whoa, really? I mean, obviously, Gurudev, you know, uh, associate of Radha and Krishna can do anything, but still, I was blown away. And the Malaysians did pull through in the end, and they did fund it. <laughs> but um, so when we finished, when we went to the printer in Delhi, and we printed, we had, we, um, it was like such last minute, and we were leaving. We went to the printer, we did all the printing work, and then Sharmai Didi and I flew out to Hawaii for Gurdiz Yasa Puja, and we had the printer send a couple of advanced copies. And on Gurdiz Yasa Puja day, at like 4.30 in the afternoon, as he's coming out of his room to go to the um, give Harikata, FedEx, the Federal Express truck arrives. And we got the package and we ripped it open and we ran to Gurudev. He's walking down the steps and we run up and we gave Gurudev the book and Gurudev put it to his head and he said, Shiva Tattva has come. And he was so happy, big smile and you know, many blessings. And so that was really wonderful. And um, then uh, in 2005, I believe it was, Gurudev was um, speaking about the, um, the journey, uh, that the jiva didn't fall from Goloka Vrindavan. And then he said to Charmadi, please put these, you know, make a book. And so that later became um, Journey of the Soul. So Gurudev ordered that in 2005. And he also ordered Gobigi in 2000. No, yeah, Gobigi in 2005. But he ordered, he was, he more stressed Journey of the Soul. But for some reason, we worked on Gobigi first. So we worked on Gobigi. And then in 2010, when we were in um, South Africa, Gurudev was had a darshan and people were asking, you know, did we did we have a choice or you know the whole did, did we choose or not choose and and then Gurudev said, oh Sharmani has already made a booklet a book about this you can ask her and then Gurudev she said, well actually Gurudev we haven't printed yet I have one more question for you on this topic and Gurudev said you haven't printed and she said no not yet when we go back to India we'll print but I have one question and Gurudev went oh my god <laughs> like that so we immediately came back to India and we. We printed, and when we were working on Gopi Ghi, that was really also um, very sweet. When we in the first edition, Shamrani asked. We were in Hawaii, and Shamrani said to Gurudev, "Oh, I thought it would be really nice if we have a CD in the back with um, you singing. You know, if you if you were if you could sing Gopi Ghi, we can include the CD." And then Gurudev said, "Me? Why me? I'm old, and my voice is all like froggy now." He said, there's so many good singers in the Mott, you know, our Rasananda Prabhu or Muni Maharaj, so many, you know, Rup Sanatan. And then Shamrani said, but Gurudev, only a gopi can sing gopi ki. So therefore, can you please sing it? And then Madam Raj got so excited. He said, yes, 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 he will sing. So he did. And now we have that recording. It's not in the second edition, but it's, it's there. I think many of you probably heard it. It's also on YouTube. So that was really, that was really fun. Um, and then, um, actually, our first tour, we were working on Guru Deva Tatma because we were in Hawaii in 2003. We were in Hawaii, and Guru Dave, he was really fired up. He said, Somebody said that I said that, like some uh, from another Mott, that there's no need for Diksha, that Harinam is enough. And so Guru Dave explained, you know, if we're at that level where we're chanting Piranam, Harinam is enough. but as I think, you know, as we hear this example, he would always give that Diksha, you know, Harinam is like the rice and Diksha is like the pot and the stove and all the elements to be able to make the rice. So Gurudev said, um, actually in class, he said, he said, I challenge anyone who says Diksha is not necessary. And then he called Shamranidi to, her, to his room the next day. So we go to his room and we come in, like Madam Rush, you know, lets us in and Gurudev was writing. He had this writing table and he was like, we sit down and he didn't even acknowledge us. He just picked up his, he was writing and he had a book and he would like write something and then he would slam that book down and he picked up another book and he was writing and he would slam it down. He had like three books and he would just slam them down. And Anita and I were just like, wow. I mean, this was, you know, the most phenomenal sight to be able to witness. And then after he finished, he put everything perfect on his table. You know, his books, all, everything was aligned, his pen in the right spot. And he looked up and he said, oh, you are here. <laughs> and then he told Shamarayan Didi what he wanted her to compile in this Guru Deva Tatma book. And he also said, yesterday in class, I was, he admitted that he was fired up. He said, I challenge anyone 
He said, but change that don't in the, what you put on the internet, don't say I challenge anyone, say I invite anyone, change that word. So um, his constant, they've constantly guided actually Shamarani in her editing and what words to put. And, um, and of course she asked a million questions. So that book came out for his 2003 Vyasa Puja. We were in uh, Florida and we gave it to him and, and it was really nice. He put it right on, on that to Param Gurney's picture. <coughs> so that was another incredible experience. And then um, um, during Kartik, I don't remember what year it was, but the Hindi team was working on Ras Panchadyai and Shamradi was sick one day so she couldn't go out on Parikama. So I always, I didn't also go on Parikama, you know. And then the designer from Delhi sent the cover, emailed the cover to us to give to Madhava Priya Prabhu to show Gurudev, or for Shamrani to show Gurudev. The cover has um, Mandri's painting on it. So Shamrani was helping. She always helped with the Hindi books, or actually all the language books with the artistic part of it. So so I go to Madhava Priya Prabhu and I said, oh, Prabhu, um, Vikash Prabhu sent the cover for Ras Panti Jai. Can I give you the file to give to go show Gurde for approval? And then Madhava Priya Prabhu said, oh, I'm so busy. I can't, I have no time. Please ask Sharmani to show it. So then I went back to Sharmani and she's in bed. She's like, I can't get up. I can't show Gurde. Go find Mandri. So I'm looking all over the mat for Mandri. I didn't know where she was, if she was on Prikam or not. I couldn't find Mandri. So then I go back to Sharmani. I can't find Mandri. She said, okay, well, you go show Gurde. I was like, me, like, what do, you know, I'm this little kid, you know, and so then at the simultaneously, we had also received a donation. Oh, it must have been 2008 because Govinda Priya started traveling with us in 2008. Maybe it was 2009, actually, because, yeah, it must have been 2009 because somebody gave us $2,000 and I wanted, we gave everything to Gurudev, any uh, Lakshmi that we got, we gave to Gurudev and then Gurudev would he told us to always keep $100 on us. And then he would give us $100 and ask us if we needed anything. So like if I needed a computer or a hard drive or whatever, you know, we would, or medicine like that, we would ask Gurudev. So, but I, we just got this $2,000 and I really wanted to go in the Priya to come on the next tour. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to bring this money with me and see if like either give it to Gurudev or see what happens. Like, yeah, I'll just ask him. So, but I was kind of nervous because Rajnath Prabhu, whenever we had money, he would always take it. And um, he would even one time we had, we gave, I gave another time I had like a thousand dollars and I gave to Gurudev and Gurudev said, oh, but you have so many expenses. You and Shamrani have so many expenses. You keep it. No, no. He looked at Rajan and he said, should I take it? And Rajan said, yes, Gurudev. So, so this time I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to bring this $2,000 and see what happens. So I go to Gurudev and he's just there with just uh, Shifad Madam Raj. And I said, Vikash Prabhu sent the cover of Ras Pantajai and here, you know, I'm holding my computer up and I show him. And then him and Madam Raj are having a, in Hindi, a, a debate about the spelling of Dhyai, I guess the diacritic, they didn't know if it was in the right place or wrong place. And they're going back and forth and I'm just sitting there. And then Madam Raj, it was in Gilbert on Temple, Madam Raj's room is uh, next door to Gurdave's. So Madam Raj leaves to go find a dictionary. And here I am alone with Gurdave's. So I was like, oh, Gurdave. Um, we got this $2,000 and I'm wondering if we can use it to bring Govinda Priya on the next tour. And just a little backstory, um, Govinda Priya, she's born and raised in Badger and she, every year they do the best plays. I mean, the Badger plays, they're just the most incredible actors and actresses and she would always play Prahlad and she was the best Prahlad ever. So I said, Govinda, can we bring Govinda Priya on tour? And Gurudev said, who? I said, Govinda Priya. And he said, who? I said, Prahlad, he went, oh, Prahlad, she can sing, she can dance, she can speak. And he was really happy. So I gave him the $2,000 and he put it in his pocket and then he gave it back to me. And after he gave it back to me, Madam Raj came in from his room and I just took the money and I put it in my sari, knowing that that was Gurdjieff's approval that we could use it for Govinda Priya's ticket. So that was really, um, it's just always so, you know, just being with Gurudev was just such a thrilling, you know, it was always such a thrilling adventure. So one more book story, which is actually another uh, series of my uh, very dear to my heart is the Walking with the Saints series. Um, we were in, again, when we were in Odessa in 2008, Gurudev came back from a morning walk and we were in his room and Gurudev turned to one sannyasi and he, one sannyasi and he said, I want 
you to make a book of all my walks. He said, they're very important and um, I want them all in a, in a book form. So that's Nyasi said, okay, Gurudev. And Gurudev said, otherwise, how will you repay me? How can you repay your debt to Guru? So this Sanyasi, um, I really wanted to help. And Sharmani said, no, no, let's just wait and see what happens. It's not your order. But I, I just love transcribing. And I, in my head, I knew like where Gurde was every day and when he spoke and when he didn't speak. And so a year went by and the sanyasi, nothing happened with that book. So then Gurde told us, asked us to do it. He said the Sanyasi would do it in the next day of Brahma. <laughs> so we got to do, we got to take on the project. So we worked, the first year we did was 2008. And um, we were in Brazil. Yeah, we were in Brazil and I had to bring something to Gurudev. And so I gave, someone gave me something to give to him. So I went in his room and again, no one was there. And I said, Gurudev, um, so I was the first, I was the first editor, like the fidelity checker. Every other people would transcribe and I would listen and um, go over the transcriptions and fill in blank words or change things that were not transcribed right. And so it was incredible. I was like, you feel like you're on the walk with Guru Dave. I mean, I don't know, if, you know, for those of you who have, who have read the books, you, know, you feel like you're there. So I said to Guru Dave, I said, hey, Guru Dave, I know that the disciple can never thank the guru. But yeah, I just have to say thank you for allowing me to work on your walk books. I feel like I'm there with you on these walks. And then Guru Dave said, and then he got like a really like boyish smile. And he said, yes, I've told so many important things in my walks, especially in Badger. So um, that was really incredible. The first one we were able to offer him personally, 2008 um, in the Delhi temple when he was doing his sick, sick pass, Leela, we, the first came from the publisher and we went, we gave it to him and he went through each page and the chapter page where he saw every country he was in. And um, so that was really sweet. Oh, and also Way of Love. Sorry, the one more book story. <laughs> when we gave him Way of Love, he was really, really excited about that as well. We, um, <clears throat> He was still in his, we went to his room at like seven in the morning and he was under this mosquito tent in Delhi and he looked through it and there was this one subtitle that says uh, unity and diversity. And when Gurdjieff saw it, he said, I said that, I said that. You know, so he was really happy and he said he was really like, he wants these small books to go out to the masses. He said, even freely to everybody. So um, it's really nice that actually we've, you know, probably printed about a hundred thousand by this time. So that was a really wonderful, um, it's a wonderful experience working on Gurudev's publications. Um, and similarly working on, well, I didn't work on, obviously, I'm not an artist at all whatsoever, but um, facilitating, helping to facilitate and assist Shamrani Didi in her art, you know, my, my role is just make sure she has her paintbrushes and the paints and whatever she needed, you know, for, for the art. But um, we had Gurudev, I mean, Gurudev, his humor, his sense of humor was just too much. He would rile Shamrani Didi up. Like he would say, um, remember when he ordered, I think it was 2004, he ordered Chamit Karchanjika and Prem Sampu for her to do the cover. And so he would tell her, oh, the book is already done. The book is done and they're just waiting for the cover. When are you gonna finish it after I die? And so, <laughs> She would get all frazzled, you know, and stay up all night. And then we would go ask Madhava Priya Prabhu, oh, Gurde said the book is done and they're just waiting in the cover. And then Madhava Priya Prabhu would be like, what? We have so much editing to do. We are so far from being done, you know? And so she would get so upset with Gurde that he would just like, you know, put her on these marathons and rile her up. And, um, and when she was doing um, Bhagavad Arkham Richi Mala, this painting of um, Bhakti Vinod Thakur having, uh, vision, you know, sportsy of Srub Damodar. Srub Damodar came and told Bhakti Thakur all these essential verses from the Bhagavatam to put in a book. And that book is Bhagavad Arkham Richi Mala. So we would keep showing it to Gurudev and Gurudev kept saying, he doesn't look like Bhakti Thakur. He doesn't look like Bhakti Thakur. And Gurudev was getting so annoyed and Shamraidi was getting so annoyed. And then he said, just, just cop, just follow the picture that we have on the altar. And then finally she made some alterations and Gurudev said, yes, yes, finally he looks like Bhakti Thakur. And similarly with Srub Damodar, everyone who would come in the room and see the painting, like, oh, Mahaprabhu? And she's like, no, it's Srub Damodar. And she was getting so annoyed with people thinking it was Mahaprabhu that she asked Gurudev, she said, Gurudev, everyone thinks that this is Mahaprabhu, how to make him look like Srub Damodar? So Gurudev said, 
just make him look like Sri Dhammadar. And then Shamrani said, well, you can see him. You're with him. You can see him. I've never seen him. Can you tell me? So then Gurudev said, oh, give him some um, stubble, like a little, like, you know, like not freshly shaved. Like, so she did that. And then you became Sri Dhammadar. So just watching that, those interactions and watching the paintings and seeing like Gurudev install the painting by his glance, you know, because these paintings are not different from Takraji is um, just a really heart altering experience. Um, so when we were doing, she was doing these line drawings for Gurudev's Gita Govinda. First she did these black and white line drawings and she would show Gurudev them and Gurudev would say, oh, they're nice, but make them, they should be Indian beautiful. And then he's one time he said, not American beautiful. And he pointed to me, she is American beautiful. <laughs> he's like, well, they should be Indian beautiful. <laughs> so Gurudev would like, he just for months and months, he would say they were not good. They were not pretty enough. They were not, you know, he really, uh, you know, so she would just really delve deep. And finally at the end, he was so happy. He was so happy with these line drawings. Gurudev, Gurudev directed every aspect of the paintings, even, um, is it uh, Manani Radha, where her L, like, was it Manani Radha? Yeah, or Jai Street. Yeah, Manani Radha. At the end, when it was finished, Gurudev said, he even looked at the elbow of Radharani and he said, she should have some dimple to show, like, her elbow. You know, like, what, like, incredible detail. So that was really amazing. And actually, when we brought Manani Radha, when it was done, done to Gurudev in Mathura, he was in his room in Mathura. And when she showed it to him, Gurudev said, what have you done? And then Shamrani got really worried. I was worried too. We we're like, no, he seemed upset. He said, it is better than this. And he pointed, he had Seva Kunj up on his wall and he went, it is better than this. So that was really sweet. And then of course, Kunj Kirtan, the finale painting. Um, he ordered that we were in Cebu in the Philippines in 2009. And Shamrani, actually Shamrani spent 20 minutes showing her every, all of her, painting she did, because Gurudev was working on his Hindi Bhagavatam. So she showed Gurudev all these paintings that she did for Prabhupada's Bhagavatam to see if he wanted to use any. So finally, after 20 minutes of looking at them all, he said, now, now I have something to say. And she was like, okay. And he said, I want that you do a paintings. Oh, he quoted these verses, um, you know, after the Mangla Charn, after the Maha Mantra, like we do the, Ma the Mangla Charn and then up to Maha Mantra. And then after there's a whole extra set of verses to different personalities. And there's four verses there to Krishna. Lendi, Rukanti, Manuvadanam, and Kastori Tilakam, Lata Patale, Vakshas. There's these four verses, and Gurudev quoted them all. And he said, I want paintings that to pick this, like could be any general painting of Radha and Krishna that we can use for any book. And so then Shamaranidi said, Okay, and she didn't actually want to paint anymore. And she said, Can I just, um, can someone else paint it and I just guide them and overlook it? And then Gurudev said, No, if you don't paint, what will you do with your hands? So she's like, okay. So she chose this Kunj Kirtan. It's actually from Bilat Pushmanjali. And um, she, we were, in, we were in Hong Kong and Gurdiv in 2009, she worked on the sketch and we were in Hong Kong and Gurdiv was in China. Actually, it was the first time that actually ended at a pure Mahabhagavat step foot in China. Um, Gurdiv got, they got uh, transit visas to go and so we were in Hong Kong and I actually, by some miracle, I had a visa for China because I had met my mother there um, six months prior for a day while she was on a vacation. And she got me a multiple, she paid for this like visa for me and she, I got a multiple entry, but Charmaine's was denied because they said her picture looked too religious. So um, we were in Hong Kong and I really wanted to go see Gurdiv in China and Brajanath Prabhu was like, let's wait and see after a day how it is. They didn't want any, they didn't really want any Westerners there to attract any attention. But after a day when they saw everything was um, relaxed and fine, Brajanath Prabhu said I could come. And then I asked Jamranidi, can I go? And she said, you can't just go and enjoy Gurudev. You have to have a reason to go. I was like, okay, so give me a reason to go. And so she worked all day and she, she was almost done, but not fully done, but she worked like the next 10 hours and she finished the Kunj Kirtan sketch. And she said, you can bring this to Gurudev and get his permission, you know, his approval. She would always get his approval on the sketch before she would put it onto the canvas. So that was really phenomenal. I got to go to Hong Kong, I mean, to, to China. I went on a bus with two Hong Kong devotees 
and we get to China and watching Rooney in China, that was thrilling. They were in China, you're not allowed to have a gathering of more than 20 people at a time. So he was just having like rotating darshans and they let me just stay in the house. So I got to be there for that. But then when he did initiation, he said, it has to be all at once. It was like 75 initiates. He said, I can't, you can't do too many. But anyway, so I got to go to his room and I said, oh, Gurudev, um, Sharanji wants to know if, if the sketch is okay. And so Gurudev looked at it and um, he commented that at that time, I think it's the gopi dancing on the left and it's Champakalata or is that Chicha? I, I think the gopi dancing is Champa, no, Chicha. Chicha or Champakalata, I can't remember right now off the top of my head. But he, that, he said that gopi was too prominent and it was, was overpowering Radharani. So to make her less prominent and Radharani more prominent. So then Shamarani had me ask him because Gurudev, like for all the other paintings like Prem Samput, Chamakarchanjika, um, Damodar Astakam, Gurudev would say it's for this book. And so this is the pastime. He would have her paint, you know, that pastime. And he'd say, you know, Seva Kunj, can you paint my heart? So with this pastime, with Kunj Kirtan, she chose the pastime. So she asked me to ask him, um, is this still his heart? So I asked him that. And then Gurudev said, I have given her all my bobs and all my moods. So that was like, wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now we're working, we're in India, uh, in 2005, Gurudev, well, like four times Gurudev said, I, the first time he said, I have seen one big book, it was a coffee table book, like the ISKCON art book, and then he said, one artist in Vrindavan named Kanai Lal, he got an award from the president for being the best artist, and Gurudev said, but if, if, if he saw, if the president saw your art, what would he say, what would he do, so make one book of all your art. And she said, all the art I did for you. And he said, no, since the time of Swamiji. So here we are 16 years later, the book is done, but we have to, um, she has to proof every single painting. It's over three, 300 paintings. And she has to see every painting come off the, the press to make sure all the colors are right. So we were in the middle of doing that last week and then Delhi went on lockdown. And now here we are in Rindavan, by Gurdjieff's mercy to be in the Holy Dom. Um, so, um, yeah, as you were saying, Shashikala, at the beginning when how Gurdiv, uh, Didi would ask Gurdiv so many questions. In 2003, we were in um, Brazil and Sharmarani was working on, um, I think she was working on the Rathiatra book and Rama Samhita simultaneously. So we had a darshan, it was a group darshan and Gurdiv, she said, oh Gurdiv, I have a question for you. He's like, what? So she asked the question and then she had like, she kept having more and more questions. And finally Gurudev said, each question you'll have to give me a hundred dollars. So then Shamrani turns to the crowd and she said, can someone, can I borrow a hundred dollars from somebody? And then one devotee gave her a thousand dollars, knowing that that was gonna go to Gurudev. So she gives Gurudev a thousand dollars. She said, Gurudev, now I'm entitled to 10 questions. So then you went, questions, questions, questions. You're made of questions. From now on, your name is Question Rani. So that's how she got that nickname. And every time, actually, like sometimes, you know, I, I shared at the beginning, we would give all of our Lakshmi to Gurudev and then he would pay for everything. Sometimes Shamrani was a little sneaky. She would like keep, she would like keep a few hundred dollars. So then when I asked a question, we can pay him, you know, because he always said a hundred dollars a question. So she's like, Gurudev, here's $400. Now I have four questions. So it was a really you know, very playful that they had that exchange. Um, so yeah, I'm extremely fortunate to have um, been on tour and now I'm going on my, I don't know, 18th year, or nine, what year are we in 22? Anyways, 18 years or so with Michelle Marnie. At the beginning though, like I said, I was so new in Bhakti. I'm still new in Bhakti, but I was newer then. And also very young in age that I was very immature and, um, I would always argue. I would always talk back to Shamrani Didi. And, um, you know, I'm still a little bit naughty, but back then in my younger years, I was <clears throat> a little bit hard to deal with. And so one time, one time we went to Gurdiv's room, Didi with Shamrani was bringing somebody to see Gurdiv. And then it was just the, the private darshan. And we were walking out of Gurdiv's room. He was sitting on his bed and we were walking out, you know, our backs were walking out. And then Gurdiv called, he's like, oh, Shamrani. And then we both turn around. And she's like, yes. And then Gurudev said, oh, sometimes she quarrels with you. And then Shamrani put her arm around me. She's like, no, Gurudev, she's wonderful. 
And then Gurudev said, please forgive her like that. So that sweetness, that compassion, every time we, I argue with her, I tell her, I remind her, Gurudev said, you have to forgive me. So Gurudev was so gentle and so encouraging and beautiful, kind to us little babies. Um, one time, actually, I went to him and told him that it was difficult for me. You know, I would always, I'd get a little upset and I'd quarrel with Sharmani and he was like, who cares? He said, uh, um, Krishna quarrels with Mother Shoda all the time. And Krishna and the gopis, what to speak of them? They're always quarreling. And then he said, and Madam Raj, she always quarrels with me. He says, so no harm. Don't worry about it. So that was really soothing to my heart. I feel like, okay, I have a little bit of a golden ticket <laughs> out of, you know, I would always remember that. You know, I try obviously to be, to not quarrel, but um, having those words from our beloved Guru Dave gives that, you know, soothing, soothing balm to the heart to remember him in that way. So um, I guess I'll end here. I could tell about when my family members came. Should I do five minutes? Is that cool? Um, Okay, so my, I come, you know, obviously from a non-devotee family, very non-devotee, and uh, um, my uh, mother and father came at separate times. Actually, my father came to see Gurudev, not to see Gurudev, but to get me to sign some inheritance papers. So he came in 2005, and um, Gurudev just, you know, Gurudev just knows how to win everyone's heart. He said to my father, he said, oh, we are so lucky we are sharing her. And that captivated my father. And Gurudev said, and Gurudev saw these, pap these papers in his hand, knowing that I signed over this inheritance. And he said, you know, after you leave this world, you can't take a penny with you. And when you leave, where will you go? And then it was like, my dad was in trance or something. Gurudev did something to my dad. He said, hmm, that's a good question. I'll have to think about it. And then Gurudev pointed to me and he said, she knows, you should learn from her. And then my father said, I hope we can all become enlightened like you, which for him to say something like that, it was like, wow, you know, so that was really, really amazing. And then in 2000, my mother would never come because they, um, you know, weren't so happy about my life's choices. But in 2010, I told my mother that this is the last time my guru was coming to America. And it would mean so much to me if you could come meet him. And my grandmother had come actually twice. My grandmother and I were extremely close. And I said, Gurudev, this is my grandmother. And Gurudev said, oh, she's your grandmother, and then she's also my grandmother. And that was super sweet. And then that was the first time. And the next time she came in 2010, Gurudev came up to her. Gurudev wasn't really giving darshan so much because of his health. Gurudev came up to her and took her hand and said, thank you for coming to see me. And then when I drove my grandmother home, she said, I can't believe someone so powerful remembered me. So that was really special. And when she left this world, she had such an easy passing. And I know that was Gurudev's mercy. And so then when my mother came, who was kind of opposed, Gurudev said to her, oh, I've met your mother and I have met your husband. And she said, you have? She didn't even know that they had come. And um, it was a super, super sweet darshan. I was so nervous. My mother's like, anyways, she's brought me into this world. And Gurudev said we should be indebted to our parents, actually, for bringing us, raising us and bringing us. And actually, um, very much so indebted to them. But Gurudev was so sweet with her. And he said, she actually said to my, she actually said to Gurudev, I don't understand why someone like my daughter who has a master's degree, um, you know, a normal citizen of America and has a master's degree would work for the religion. So Gurudev said, Gurudev said, you know, this, this world is like a garden and we work so hard to cultivate this garden, but after we leave this garden, we can't take anything with us. He said, you should not worry. She is working for the, she is doing the best work for this world. And I have come to take her to the eternal garden. And then my mother was like, okay. And then he said to her, even if you don't understand what I'm saying, something will come in your heart because you're hearing it from me. That was in 2010. And after that, she became actually quite sweet. And our relationship like really shifted. And you know, Gurudev's mercy, you know, Gurudev is just so merciful to everybody. Gurudev just doesn't, you know, like the, again, back to the, 
samsara dava, you know, the rain doesn't discriminate where it falls, it even falls in the ocean. So similarly, Shiguru doesn't discriminate where they give their, you know, he, she gives her their mercy. So this is our beloved Gurudev, most merciful, still just pouring his mercy down to this day. You know, he, I remember in 2010, Vijay Krishna Prabhu said, Gurudev, how, how we know that you're happy? And he said, because you will be happy. And then he also said, if you have any question, you know, you can just ask me and I will answer. Because one time I was listening to this one tape of a 1992 darshan where one Iskan guru asked Gurudev, like, oh, now that my Prabhupada is not here, I'm paying to, I'm praying to Chaita Guru, you know, Guru in the heart. And Gurudev said, oh, I never think like this. I always think my Guru is here. and I'm always praying to him and he always answers me. And so Gurudev has also instructed us like this, that any question, and I'm sure we've always had this, you know, these moments, um, you know, where we just, just, you know, Gurudev, please guide me. What should I do? You know, and that's, he's given us the umbilical cord to him through our Java beads. You know, Nishapanishad, you know, Nishapanishad, says about Krishna, you are very near and also very far away. So through our japa, Gurudev has given us this japa and he's initiated us into the chanting of the Maha Mantra. So he's very, he's very near. And so we're so fortunate to, to have come in this line. Like, what a rarity, how rare, you know, that of millions, millions of people in this world, billions of people in this world. And we've come in this line and we've come in, you know, into this, beautiful line and family of our beloved Gurudev, who's not different from all of our Acharyas, the same line, Shila Saraswati Thakur. So, um, all glories to our most beloved Gurudev, Shila Gurudev Ki Jai. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so Thank you so much. Didi, so beautiful you spoke. And uh, also, you said in the last also, hey, you had your master degree, and um, so um, I think uh, you in the beginning you were preparing yourself for doing the seva, so that was necessary to get the entrance. And uh, you know, Gurudev was making you actually before ready, mm. and you and you made yourself ready. Mm. So that's why you came and uh, met with uh, all these wonderful devotees and also with Shamarani Didi. And um, mm -hmm. so, and your father, uh, yeah, so beautiful mm -hmm. um, uh, the conversation between um, uh, Shila Gurudev and your father, and uh, and he, the question which Gurudev asked, uh, yeah, uh, tell uh, that he had to think uh, um, of his life. So he, mm -hmm. how Gurudev told uh, um, uh, you, um, that uh, to your father uh, that um, your, your uh, Gurudev said also uh, to your father that he had to learn from you also. Yeah, so that was so nice how he brought it. And your grandmother passing here, yeah, it was all mercy here. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, much mercy. so I, I'm also seeing the photos here yeah, were receiving mercy. Their uh, family members, the passing is very great, the uh, way mm -hmm. they are passing. You can see how it goes further. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you said also hey, um, how you were traveling in the beginning. Hey, uh, that. Um, and uh, you were also, oh, you were mentioning so many things, like uh, I wrote it down, uh, mm -hmm. like um, uh, like uh, also about um, uh, how you met uh, Gurudev and uh, also, um, uh, so like uh, how, and, and um, like ex uh, the book distributions and uh, like um, uh, group, uh, that uh, also like um, he was, um, uh like um actually he was um uh how do you say um all the uh, how he instructed also shamarani yeah? uh, the special relation uh, relation between shamarani and gurudev you mentioned also and uh, also that gurudev was also telling her also uh, so funny that he had to, she had to also give each time uh, money and then uh, and then suddenly she received like a thousand uh, dollar and then she said uh, uh, yeah, ten time I can, and then also one time she painted also, hey, like uh, making notes, and then yeah. uh, she was cleverly, you know, she knew always uh, how to cleverly go to Shila Gurudev, mm -hmm. and also um, uh, uh, like um, uh, also the instruction how she had to paint also, hey, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, all the details actually, and so and, and how how Shila Gurudev was saying that Shamarani 
uh, she knows, uh, uh, she, she actually, how you said that uh, Shamarani Didi also got uh, blessings of Sheila Gurudev, uh, mm. that uh, he, he said, uh, she knows my mood, everything. Mm. And uh, you know, yeah. and he yeah. left everything to her also finally. <laughs> so this is very great to her. And also about the tour, um, like, um, Hair also in a, a Govardhan, uh, you mentioned hair also, but she, she thought about book. Yeah, suddenly in a hurry, you had to, you know, uh, compose everything and um, uh, write, uh, typing and all this work. Yeah, and, and suddenly you received help by the mercy of Sheila Gurudu, and uh, suddenly you went to the printing press. And uh, so it, it is, and how, like, uh, and in the beginning, I know it is very, um, in a hurry, if you do, then you, you, you said that three um, stories were in one yeah? mm. and then to separate and or how to compose you know in a one whole part and yeah. in, a, in a sort of short a time it's very clever you know to do it yeah. you should, but you were on uh, expert mm. guidance uh, like of Shomarani they did so and Sheila Gurudev also so uh, very quickly you managed uh, her to print that book yeah. and all the other books uh, like this and also, like uh, you were mentioning about Shila Gurudev in uh, Russia, eh? it was very hot there. Mm -hmm. And Shila Gurudev went there. And even it was so hot, he came there. And then he said in the morning, better to do 6 uh, a.m. the program. You can see, eh? um, like um, uh, there was a forest fire. Eh? Actually, yeah. and, we, uh, and uh, because we were actually Gurudev knew not only the, uh, like a forest fire was this, but uh, devotees there who were in line to have initiation of Gurudev, they were actually in forest fire and Gurudev yeah. came, you know, to yeah. buy his blessing, you know, to uh, or the shower them, yeah, yeah, to, uh, to, uh, to get rid of the forest fire. Actually, it was internal, externally, ex actually, what happened there. Yeah. And it was his uh, last time, uh, it was in 2010, that was his last travel to the West. Yeah. And, um, so that is very great uh, how, uh, how Gurudev is, uh, you know, um, doing for us, what he's doing actually, what he did for us. And he, he said like, uh, um, also he compared also uh, Swami Maharaj yeah, when he came in the West. And um, so he had two heart attack. And then um, then Gurudev said, uh, you know, he was also, um, Gurudev came, to, uh, actually what uh, Swami Maharaj did, it was actually Gurudev, uh, he inspired Gurudev he had to go and travel and see all the places, uh, yeah, but he went through and see mm -hmm. what happened in the West. And so he came. And actually, Gurudev was also saying, uh, also, so um, Swami Maharaj, he was actually the jungle, he was cutting the jungle. And Gurudev thought in the beginning he had also to cut the jungle. But then suddenly later on, Gurudev said, uh, I'm not here for cutting the jungle. I came to yeah. uh, like a blind to jump. Yeah, from that and uh, you know uh, I do, I'm not want to um, uh, lose my time in cutting only jungle so he suddenly jumped and he spoke high to and also uh, you know um, what he has spoken uh, you all you transcribed also many lectures and uh, also which is in pure bhakti here yeah, all the lectures I was each time eagerly to wait oh when will the other one come <laughs> and, you know, each one each time I was really waiting and I was very indebted to you and your team yeah. Shumarani yeah. Didi yeah? and um, so uh, it was very great work and all the uh, lectures hey, uh, yeah, later on but they were published in a book form so mm. they are very great and indebted and Shamarani did, did also so many paintings and uh, so her paintings also came there and now so many um, book distribution uh, like so many um, paintings she did and now her life last um, uh, now it is the art book this uh, book yes. is coming about to come out huh? yeah, so yeah uh, and now you are there in um, about actually we're about to uh, publish but now there is a lockdown yeah there in uh, India yeah. and now yeah. I think Vrindavan Dham wants you to have there and by the <laughs> Vrindavan Dham then you are able to publish very quickly mm -hmm. so we are all okay. eagerly waiting for that moment uh, to come and then we will all uh, I cannot wait huh? because it is very great to have such a life work because then uh, during chanting you can each time meditate and look at it the past time is there also something yeah. about that how yeah, but, uh, yeah. so this is very good for all the future devotees eh? to uh, to yes. have this book and to order this and 
have this yeah. nectar. Uh, I'm very happy that this ID came forward to print everything together. So it is all what she pre uh, painted in ISKCON and also uh, during Guru's present, everything yeah. is coming everything. in one book, hey, isn't it? Yeah, yes. yeah. And it's got galleries like Bhagavad Gita Gallery, the Chiba yes. Bhavata, yes. the and then today's painting. Yes. So it's just very great. And um, and also that the post story have when you went to um, uh, Philippines, hey? you wanted to go there. And then Shamarani Didi said, oh, you have to, you should not go empty handed. You should mm -hmm. have something. Uh, hey? and, and then she, so, so much endeavor she did hey? to make the sketch ready so that you yeah. could bring to Srila Gurudev. So much mercy. Yes. So he got uh, personal in contact and uh, spent time with Gurudev for that. And uh, so this very great. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so I'm very happy uh, uh, that uh, you have uh, joined uh, our centennial program. I'm and, so happy. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much.